All right, I've got one more new fly for you, and this one here that's in the vise is the Green Drake version, and you can see as I spin this sucker around, this is a big, messy cripple pattern with a ton of surface area, but you can see how it'll sit in the water, kind of a shaggy underbody, little moose hair tail, and a just mountain of surface area. Um, really super buoyant fly. This fly is called a Timmy. And uh, if you know, you know. Um, but I wanted to show you the Green Drake version just so you don't forget about this one. But I'm going to tie you a little bit smaller version. I'll tie you a blue winged olive version um, or just the brown version. This fly is going to come in uh, Green Drake, olive, um, PMD, um, brown Drake. Um, I've tied it for gray Drakes as well. Um, <clears throat> this is just a uh, sort of low floating loop wing synthetic messy perfect little cripple pattern this is the bug kind of half out of the shuck uh, emerging wings flopping around um, just not quite getting where he needs to be not getting it done um, and vulnerable and easy to catch and this fly has been a murderous sucker um, so that's, that's all I'm going to tell you about this. This one sort of rivals the mole fly. Uh, might be a little, little easier to keep floating as well. Um, you know, I don't have much issues keeping the mole fly floating. Uh, watch the videos and I'll show you how to keep that dry. There's, there's going to be one out there on that too. And, uh, um, but this fly uh, you know, floats even better being synthetic. So um, I'm going to pull that one out of the vise. And I'm going to put, um, I'll tie this in a 16 again just for clarity here just to, um, but down to a down to a 2022 20, something like that um, is typically where I'd where I'd put this in. Let me get us zeroed back in here on our camera. There we go. Um, so this is a size 16, 24, 87. I'm actually going to tilt that hook just a bit. And what I'll do here is I'm going to start with some brown 18 knot nano silk, um, and I like this nano silk. It's you know it's just very small, very thin thread. Um, it's going to lend itself just beautifully for what I need to do here. If I can get it started, and I'm going to start this thread and come back down about halfway down the bend on this hook. <coughs> and I'm going to take three strands of moose hair. And this is just a clump of moose body hair. You can use moose hawk as well. Um, and I've just stacked it up in my hair stacker, cleaned it all out, stacked it up, and then bound it together with thread. So I've just got these little tailing blanks. I have a few of them sitting on my desk here so I don't have to stack them. When I'm just tying in a few fibers, it's much easier to, to work from this clump than it is to try to clip off a few fibers. If I was doing whole tails, um, you know, depending on the size of the flies, if I'm doing whole tails, um, you know, I'll stack 10 or 12 at a time. But... Um, this is sort of a cheat code for that as well, but I'm going to cut um, three of these off. Now, um, you know, it just depends on the bug that you're, I tend to tie them all with, you know, I don't know, two or three tails. It depends on my mood. Um, depends on the bug you're trying to imitate, how many tails it's really got. Fish can't count. Um, I just try to get some consistent number, so I'm going to put three of these on there. Um, and I know some, some bug nerd's going to be like, hey, the beta snip doesn't have or does have. I don't know if it does or doesn't. I don't know how many tails it's got. Because you know what? I can't count either. So keep it to yourself. Um, I'm going to tie this in back here at the bend of the hook. Just a short little tail. Okay. Kind of splay those out. And while I'm back there, I'll figure eight those fibers. Like so. Just to keep them spread. Now, that might be a lot easier to do with just two. You can split it like an RS2 tail with a tag into your thread. Whatever you got to do. Um, you know, it's not super important exactly how you go about it. But you want to end up with a little split tail like that hanging back there at the bend. Now I'm going to take... <coughs> Excuse me, I've been home with a cold the past few days, so I'm whipping up these videos and my voice only holds up so long. So maybe we'll just be quiet during the rest of this video. How do you feel about that? <laughs> not so not so much luck. Fat chance, pal. Uh, I'm going to keep talking. I might cough a little bit here and there. Excuse me if I do. So I'm going to dub a little bit of 
brown hair's mask dubbing from Nature Spirit, and um, this is hair's ear dubbing. So it's rabbit fur, antron, and hair's mask. Um, so I'm just going to dub a little bit of brown on there. And, and again, you can do these in a variety of colors. You know, you can do um, split colors, like for the PMD, I'll do a brown abdomen and then a yellow thorax. Um, this all brown version, sort of owing to the, to the mole fly, um, is hard to argue with. But I'm going to dub just a skinny little abdomen that does taper up toward the front end here. And I'm going to go a little further forward than where I'm ultimately going to end, end the body. And you can see that's a nice shaggy dubbing. A few extra crazy ones there that don't need to be there. Just a nice little shaggy dubbing. And then I'm going to bump my thread back a bit. You don't really have to trim those spares out, but I'm just kind of getting them out of your way. Um, so now for the wing. Um, so this is going to become the forward wing, the side wings, the legs. This is, this is the rest of the fly. Um, this is some black and smoke gray and brown macrame yarn that I've just mixed together. And I'm going to take, and, and the amount of this material is sort of up to you. If you want, uh, if you're fishing the fly in heavier water, if you have trouble seeing flies, um, you can make it a little heavier. They do work very well when they're tied sparsely, um, but they're not quite as buoyant or as easy to see. So um, I'm going to say this clump is a little on the heavy side, but I'm going to, I'm going to run with it. Um, and what I'll do here is I'm going to tie this in right there at about that 75% point, and I want a long tag toward the front end here. All right, bring my thread in front and kind of prop that up a little bit. And I'm going to take some more dubbing, same dubbing in this case, but like I say, don't be afraid to, to mix it up a little bit. Use another color dubbing here. Um, you know, the blueing olive version um, could be brown with an olive thorax or gray thorax. Um, and what, again, what we're trying to imitate is that, that nymph coming out of the or the adult coming out of that nymphal shuck. Um, so you'll have the color of the nymph and the color of the adult. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to dub this kind of a round thorax there. Then I'm going to pull that front end back and continue that thorax. And I want to jam this dubbing right up against the front edge there. Tighten that last little bit down. Like so. Okay, so that's stick it up. And I leave that long on purpose. Now I'm going to divide this about in half. Just kind of part that off to the sides. My fingers can tell better when I'm about half and half. And I don't, uh, don't necessarily, let me turn that that way for you, I don't necessarily worry about getting that split exactly down the middle. I want this to look disheveled. The whole idea of this is this fly is kind of ratty, uh, ratty and ragged. Um, and that's, that's what we're shooting for here. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up this yarn. That's hanging out the back, and I'm going to pull it forward. Let me swing these wings out of the way so you can see what I do here. So I'm going to pull it forward out over the hook eye, and then push it back. You can see how that forms that little loop. I'm also pinching the hook right there, and I'm going to tie that down with three or four tight wraps right behind the hook eye, like so. So we've got a little loop. Then I'm going to lift that forward wing up. Kind of sweep everything back, and I'll put a few turns between the hook eye and that front wing. And what that's going to do is kind of prop that up off the off the eye of the hook. That's going to give us a much better time threading the fly uh, than we would have had um, had we left it uh, uh, just sticking straight out over the hook eye. Now I'm going to trim that down just a bit. That's not the final trim. I just want my whip finish to be able to reach around it, and I'll whip finish between that forward wing and the loop. trim that out of there. Now I'm going to pick up all three of those wings and kind of lean them forward. Try to do this where you can see it. I'll kind of cut in an angle here. Like so. Push those side wings down and that forward wing and kind of mush up that loop a little bit. So, oh, now you're getting the picture. Now you're getting the picture. That advanced wing, reminiscent of the mole fly. Um, lots of surface area created from those side wings. Um, and I don't love to have those exactly square. So 
So I'll come in and kind of rat that up a bit. And I'll tell you, the more you fish this fly, the rattier it gets, the better it works. Um, I like flies like that. And then I'm going to come in with my dubbing brush here and just pick out. You can use Velcro here also. You just got to be careful not to pull your, your loop wing loose or break the fibers in it. You won't really pull it loose because it's tied down tightly. Just pick that body out a bit so it's ragged. And that is Tim A. Oh, now you get it. Yep. Now you get it. I gave it away. There he is. Tie some up. Go out and fish him. Give me a call. Tell me all about it. You're going to like it. I already do. Uh, you probably don't even need to call me. I already know you're going to catch fish on it. Just go put it in the water. Watch him eat it. It's fun as fun as can be. All right. I'm Charlie Craven. Thanks for watching. You guys take care.